single largest consumer of oil of any entity in the world. It's hard to believe that almost a trillion dollars have been spent, tens of thousands of lives lost in this region, battles ignited by fossil fuels destroying our planet. So I've come here to Camp Arafjan, one of the largest US bases in the Middle East, to see what's being done to break our fossil fuel habit. In 2012, the Army released policy that said that commanders at every level need to start looking at uh, ways to reduce their energy output. So we're looking at a bunch of different ways that we can incorporate solar, reuse water, those sort of things. I've never seen that on any military base, and I've visited a lot of them, so that's kind of new here, huh? And in fact, I can give you a tour of some of the stuff that we're doing here. Absolutely. The chief tells me the military has been investing in solar light carts, wind, battery storage, and Trujillo also shows me plans for a solar-powered parking lot. To me, what is interesting is, is, I mean, here we are in the middle of the desert, and you have an abundant amount of sun. What do you think it is that has helped the military back in a way when it comes to making the base more green? I presented this project, and everybody in the room had the exact same question you had. They said, this is a great idea, Chief. Why are we barely doing this now? As they leave the base, all I see are diesel generators and row after row of gas-guzzling tanks and trucks. Green projects seem to barely exist. And yet, the military is on target for the clean energy goals. It just seems like a pretty low target. Why? Today, I'm hoping to get answers from some of those who have served our military at its highest level. The question that I really have for you guys is the Department of uh, Defense is dragging its feet and it's slow on that. What do you think is the reason for that? I think the military has been slow to come, not just the military, it's the government as well. There are a lot of laws that have been passed over the years where it's hard to make this go faster. This year, we had a Republican introduce an amendment that just passed the House that said that the Department of Defense can't do anything on any renewable energy and climate change. Right. Nothing, can't spend any money on climate change at all. Uh, I can remember times when uh, I was told that uh, there were certain staffers uh, looking for items in the U.S. budget, in the defense budget, uh, that had to do with either climate or energy so that they could zero those out. I mean, it, it must be really weird, because to me, the Republicans have been more supportive of the military. But he always said you have to go kind of to the other party to get sympathy. Every year there would be uh, in the House, there would be members who would try to strip out all of the energy programs at DOD. That's right. Many Republicans are still fighting the Pentagon's directive for the military to go green. These executive orders re require the Department of Defense to squander, squander precious defense dollars by incorporating climate change bureaucracies into its acquisition and military operations and to waste money on green energy projects. And two House Republicans from Texas who have received hundreds of thousands of dollars from the fossil fuel industry year after year repeatedly tried to block congressional efforts to scale up the military's use of alternative fuels. I wanted to talk to my fellow Republicans, so I reached out to many members of the House and Senate Armed Services Committees, but none of them made themselves available. To be honest, I did not expect to get that much resistance from my own party. We already have the clean energy solutions to help put an end to climate insecurity and the conflict over oil. We just have to fight for them.